Hello everybody and welcome to part four of the Dovetail Box project. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to transfer the tails to the pin board. Let's get going. Okay, so what we're about to cover here is another piece of any box project that people always get wrong because it comes down to marking out. And as I've always said, people rush the marking out stage. So the way this is normally done is you get the two corresponding components. In this case, we've got two and two, and they're gonna be nested into each other like that. So what you'll do is you'll get the pin board and you'll clamp that up in the vise like this, and then you'll get a piece of supporting material from behind, get it to the same height, and then you'll get two from the other piece and rest that on top. You'll then get a knife and trace around it. But the problem that a lot of people have with this is one, they don't really know where to place this in relation to the pin board underneath. Do you leave a little gap at the bottom here or do you have to overlap it slightly or does it have to be spot on? Like people really struggle with this stage. The other thing with this is when you're tracing around it, inevitably when you get to the fourth side, you knock it. Granted, not that much, obviously, but you just sort of shift it out the way slightly. But as soon as that happens, all accuracy is lost. It's all very well trying to get that back into the same position that it was on the pin board and line it up with your existing lines, but it's so difficult to get it spot on. Even though it looks like it might be okay, it probably won't be. So what I like to do is protect against that potentially slipping and also get the pieces perfectly aligned when you're about to trace around them. And I like to do that by adding a little V groove on the back of the tails. Can you remember in part two of this dovetail box project, we made the marking gauge line very deep on the back of the tails. The reason we did that is to create this V groove. So what I'll do is I'll make a V groove to show you its benefits instead of just talking about it. Most important thing here is clamp your piece down. Don't try and do this in your hands. And what we'll do is we'll get a chisel and from the tail side, what we'll do is we'll just angle it up and take a little section out and it will go up to that marking gauge line and just pop off. And that's created a little V-shaped groove on the back of the tail. Remember, this is on the back, this isn't on the face. And this will be completely hidden once the box has been assembled. Now, if you need to, there might be a few fluffy bits left over. So just carefully cut those out with a knife. You don't want anything left in here after you've made that groove because it will throw the transferring stage out once we get round to it. So there you go, seems to be all the fluff out. And so now what we've created here is a 90 degree edge on that marking gauge line, which was established by the marking gauge. And then we've chiseled in at a certain angle, I don't know what it is, with a chisel to create sort of like a vertical wall and then a sloped one coming into it. What you can then do with this, now that we've got the V groove on the back of component three in this case, Let's get three up in the vise, but what we'll do this time is get the supporting block, but stick the pin board proud of it by about, I don't know, a millimeter, two millimeters. So this is sitting higher than this. There's a slight lip there, slide that back. And now three is putting a bit of a positive lock on that. It's holding it against that shoulder line in exactly the location of the marking gauge line that's scratched around the back of this which satisfies one of the problems that beginners have. But what it doesn't stop at this stage is the problem of it shifting sideways when you're marking this out with a marking knife. And this is where those face sides and face edges come into play. You can see we've got the face side on the top here and the face edge on the bottom, which indicates the bottom of the box. I can actually take this pin board out and double check and go face side and face edges there. So this is the bottom of the box. Let's get that back in there into the location it was in. So just sitting proud of the supporting block, that goes on there and this slides up and locks into place. Now, this is the bottom of the box, so we need to get this perfectly flush on this bottom corner in order to prevent the box from rocking after assembly. And you can simply do that with a chisel or another flat piece of material, just something that you know is flat and there you go. That's now flat against the pins and you can push the tails up to it and then slide them forward and now you've got two point location. You've got the front to back sorted and you've got the side to side sorted as well. So if for any reason this was to shift while marking it out with a knife, instead of trying to line it up by eye and all that, I can just get my supporting block from the underside, pit that up to it, slide it forwards, and then I can be pretty confident 
that that's in exactly the same place as before. Now there is one other variation of this V-groove technique which I know of and that is to cut a rabbit or a rebate on the back of the tails which provides a little shoulder on the inside of that marking gauge face in order to provide this location. I don't like this method. I tried it a few times but what that does is it changes the dimensions or the thickness of the tails which means that you have to adjust your marking gauge settings to suit and it's just one more thing to think about. By doing this v-groove technique it means that the tails stay exactly the same thickness as they are along the entire length of the piece which I find more preferable however I know people like Rob Cosman will do the rabbit technique and get great results from it. I would encourage you to try both of them but the v-groove technique is what I personally prefer. The other thing you can do at this stage is actually try and clamp the tails onto the pins which I would use in conjunction with the v-groove and using the base of the box to align everything. Just be wary though when you're using a clamp what you might end up doing is pushing the pin board down here and then making everything sort of like twist. What would be better is getting some sort of heavy weight and just laying that right here to weigh everything down and prevent it from shifting while you're marking it out. A plane or something like that would be ideal for this. Fortunately, I've got a hold fast, which will work just fine. I can pop that in there and then get everything into place. So that locked in, base of the box locked in and then very carefully tighten this up. And there you go, that is now properly locked in place. That's not going anywhere at all. So I can start tracing around this with my knife. Now I prefer to use a scalpel blade for this in particular, the Swan Morton SM01 blade, which I find to be very precise for stuff like this, as you can get into like the smallest gaps with ease. It does have a bevel on both sides of it, which means you have to kind of angle it in order to match that bevel as opposed to using like a Japanese knife where you can just lay it flat against the edge of the tail but by tilting it out like this I can kind of see exactly what's going on at that point so I'm doing this very carefully and what's important to note here is you want to do these cuts in a series of passes don't just push the knife in at full pressure and then drag it back because if this is a porous wood such as oak or ash or something like that this knife is going to sort of track those porous areas and you're not going to get a straight line. Tulip wood or poplar that I'm using here is quite forgiving so I could probably get away with it but good practice is to do a very light mark to begin with. I'm talking very light but hardly any pressure on this at all and just gradually increase it. And now I'm at pretty firm pressure. I'm not doing maximum pressure at all but I'll probably just leave it at that. That's fine. And now if I undo this hold fast and get the tail shifted, there is the knife lines. So let's just blast through that again from the start just to reiterate everything that was going on there. There's the face side, so the outside faces of the box. Flip it over, clamp it down, chisel on the back of the tail, not from this side, from the back of the tail because then that's gonna be completely hidden once the box is assembled. Back of the tail and take a very shallow groove out of it. Break off what you can, carefully sever the remaining bits with a knife. Take it to your vise, double check that what you've got, the number four matches the same number on the pin board. Don't accidentally match it to the different number obviously. Put the matching piece into the vise and that needs to sit proud of a supporting block by about a millimeter or two. Clamp that down, get the piece back in place, slide it up so that it locks onto that shoulder line and then double check that you've got the face edge and the face edge you can kind of see it down in the vise there. Get the face edges flush with one another using a chisel or a flat piece of material or whatever and then for demonstration purposes in this case I'll put a plane on top just to help weigh it down and I'm still going to put pressure down from above just in case and then very carefully light pressure and then just gradually increase it on each of them. And that is how you transfer the tails to the tops of the pin board. But we still need to do the outside face and the inside face. Now, when it comes to drawing the lines down the faces of these pin boards, these need to be perfectly square. Remember what happened when the end grain was out of square on the tails and I tried to push it into the pin board and it completely split apart. The same thing will happen on the pins if they do not descend vertically. If they slope in, you've created a wedge shaped cavity as opposed to a wedge shape. So the same thing will happen. This will split apart, or if you do it the other way, you'll end up getting some horrible gaps in there. So these need to be perfectly vertical. 
Now up until this point, I've always said that you should draw these on with pencil lines because when you're sawing it, it's slightly easier to see a dark pencil line. However, in this case, I'm gonna scratch it down with a knife because I feel like it'll be really beneficial to beginners as it's very likely you will need to adjust these pin sockets with a chisel in order to make the tails actually fit. When you're confident with your sawing and you're confident that you can saw perfectly vertical, then you can just draw those on with a pencil line and just cut to that pencil line. But if you're not too confident with your sawing, then draw this all out with a knife, which I'll show you in a second, and then it'll be much easier to chisel back into those lines later on. So what I'd recommend doing here is getting the piece upright in a vise, and you can kind of see the little nicks left over from when we scored across the end grain. All you've got to do is get a little engineer square, put your knife into one of those little nicks that we've got there on the corner, carefully score it down. Remember, do this with light pressure to begin with, and then gradually increase it. This is even more important when you're going with the grain because it's more likely to track. And we'll go into the next one, lock it into that little corner, slide the square up, and then light pressure. If it slips at all, just put it back into the knife line, slide it up. And then once you've done that, as always, just mark the waist because it's so easy to cut out the wrong areas at this point and across the end grain as well. And when it comes to knifing these vertical faces, I would also recommend doing it on the inside edge as well, because it'll be easier to get a chisel into it from this face then as well. Uh, as I said earlier, once you get confident with this and you just do it with a pencil, you don't always need to do it on this inside face because once you're confident with your sawing, if it's vertical on the front face, then it will probably be vertical on the back face. And when you're cutting it out, you're not gonna be able to see what's going on with this back line anyway. So you just kind of go for it. But for starting off, just knife the entire thing. And then once your confidence grows, you can start going to pencils. But once you do go to pencils, just make sure to make that line extremely fine. Now, what I will say is when it comes to knifing these vertical lines, it's incredibly easy to get the knife line lost within the grain of the material. With this, it's quite fortunate because poplar is a very close grain timber. If you haven't worked with it before, think maple, where it feels quite smooth. It's not very like grainy at all. Whereas if you're working with something like oak or ash, where the grain is very open, when you mark a line with the grain, it's so easy to get that line lost within the grain itself. Now, this is something that Rob is gonna struggle with when it comes to making his box out of Paduk because with this timber, it's quite grainy and it's gonna be quite easy to get that knife line lost within it. If you haven't seen this series, by the way, there'll be a link to the first part in the top corner and also in the description. It's a student series where my cameraman Rob is gonna be making this box and filming his progress as he goes. And if he makes any mistakes, he'll be able to have full access to me to help him through it. And then if you guys make the same mistakes, you'll be able to benefit from the things that I teach him as well. It's all posted on the online school on my website. Just scroll down to the bottom of each section and you'll find it. But this is something that he is going to struggle with. All I would do in this case is do a knife line down the face of it and then without moving the square, go over that with a pencil line afterwards. Because then if you can't find that knife line when you need to adjust that pin, what you can do is sort of find that pencil line and just sort of feel it with the chisel. Once it hits that knife line, it will sort of lock itself in place and then you know that you're spot on the money. But if you're working with something like maple or walnut or poplar if you wanted to go for something nice and affordable then you'll probably get away with this it's the timbers like oak ash pine might kind of happen to some extent just use your best judgment on it so i've just finished marking out the remaining three sides or remaining two sides i can't remember how many i showed you and now it's really important to check what you've actually marked out because it'll be during this process that you will have accidentally have done this or this or I don't know, something like that. It's really important to just check this. So what I'll do is put the two pieces together back to back. So face sides are both out like that on either side. Face edges are both on the bottom. And this is pretty much how the box will be assembled. And check on the ends that the tails both go out towards the outside faces, which means that the dovetails are oriented in the correct way. If they're not, i.e. they look something like this, then chances are you've marked it out wrong and it's in an S shape or you haven't got the face sides on the outside. So they should look like that on one end and exactly the same on the other end as well. And then the second thing I would do is just assemble the box so that all the numbers match up with one another 
and it's in the exact orientation it will be once it's assembled. And then double check that all the numbers match up and the lines line up with one another as well. It should be pretty obvious if something doesn't quite line up. And there you go, that's how you transfer the tails onto the pin boards. In summary, I definitely recommend doing that little V groove that helps you so much when it comes to lining these up. And then also make sure that you get the face edges aligned with each other on the bottom of the box. If not, then it's gonna be all wobbly once it's assembled and flattening off a box or a carcass is a royal nightmare, to be honest. So you wanna make sure that it's perfectly flat as soon as you assemble it to save any faffing later on. And then when it comes to actually marking it with a knife, use light pressure to start with and then gradually increase it as you go to prevent the knife from tracking into the grain of the material, especially if you're working with ash and oak and other open grain materials. And then for the vertical lines, use a knife if you're a beginner and you're not feeling too confident. Use a pencil if you're feeling confident about cutting vertically and straight to these lines later on. And use a combination of a knife and a pencil if you're a beginner working with quite a porous material where it's gonna be difficult to see this knife line. So that is it for this lesson. You're now ready to move on to the next one, which you can do so by clicking on the link below. In that episode, we'll be cutting the sockets. Press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.